Praise the Lord, and thank you for tuning in to another time of Kingdom Empowerment. I'm Pastor John Thomason, and, and again on this week, I have my, my friend with me, past, I mean, Elder David Nichols here with me on today, and we are discussing the Word of God. We are having a good time Amen. Amen. talking about the Lord and His, and His goodness. Amen. Amen. God is so good to us, you know, and, and listen, I, know, I want you to know that it's not by chance that you tuned in on today. We want you to know that God loves you more than you can even imagine. And he's with you. And he wants the best for you, his best. And, you know, Pastor David, sometimes the best that we think we want is not God's best. Right. You know, and, and when things when things like that happen and they happen to fall apart, don't get upset about it. Mm -hmm. God just has something better for you because he loves you. Right. <laughs> so on today, we want, we want to encourage you and empower you. So that you can go out and do all that God has called you to do. But we want you to know today that he loves you mm -hmm. and he is with you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, before we get into get in the word like we always do, we always open up with a word of prayer. Go ahead and bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this, for this time of getting your word. Holy Spirit, we both decrease. You be the dominant voice. Speak through these lips of clay on today. Minister to your people on today. Bring illumination and revelation to those that are watching on today, whether they're watching on Facebook or YouTube, God. I thank you that there's, there, there's no distance. There's no, they're not too far where you cannot reach out and touch them. We are standing believing in signs, wonders, and miracles while the gospel is being preached. And I thank you for what you're doing right now, Father God. And I come against all distractions of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are in charge. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, today here on Kingdom of Power, we're going to talk to you about walking and, ex and experiencing the love of God. Walking in and experiencing the love of God. Well, you know, walking in the, in the love of God means living, living, living your life according to his commandments and reflecting his love in your relationship with him mm -hmm. and with others. Mm -hmm. Now, experiencing the love of God on a personal level because he loves you. Right. It, it, that involves uh, cultivating a close relationship with him. Mm -hmm seeking his guidance and allow his love to transform you. Now there's there's this here's a Bible verse for you that I love. It's out of um John 15 verses 9 and 10. Listen to this. It says, "As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commands, and remain in his love. Listen, re remain in his love. I think that's such a powerful thing because it speaks about your obedience right. to him. He said, if you, if you love me, obey my commandments. That's right. And, and uh, man, that's my testimony. Um, I, I remember I, I grew up in the church and um, I, was about, I must have been about five years old when mm -hmm. I started coming to church. And uh, we had moved to Port Huron and from Romeo. Mm -hmm. uh, where my, my grandfather was a Sunday school superintendent. So when we moved to Port Huron, my mother wasn't saved, my father wasn't saved, but uh, he made my mother promise that he would send, uh, that she would send us to Sunday school. And she, uh, she, lo and behold, she sent us to Sunday school and, I, and um, we didn't have to stay for the service, we just had to stay for Sunday school. And 
So I started, you know, we started coming to service. But I, I started staying for service. I love church, man. When I was little, man, I loved church. I loved, the, you know, the, the piano and beating and clapping hands and singing the songs. And, man, I love church. And so I grew up really loving church. I mean, uh, the songs and everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I became, when I got older, you know, uh, being in the church, being in a uh, sanctified church, being the church of God in Christ, you know, they had a lot of rules and regulations. Don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. And, uh, of course, you know, you try to do it the best you can. Right. <laughs> and, to, <laughs> and then, you know, we spent time on the altar, uh, uh, you, know, you know, tearing for the Holy Ghost. And, mm -hmm. and uh, but I remember, um, I, you know, I remember when I was, uh, I think I was about 19. And uh, I had just graduated from high school. And um, we was in revival. Back then, they had revivals for weeks, you know, uh, first week, second week. Yeah. Now we, we have revival for a couple of days, right, but they right. had revival for, <laughs> they was having revival for a week. And uh, I went to the revival every night, sang in the choir, you know. Uh, I was very, very active in the church, but man, it wasn't working for me. I kept on messing up. So finally, you know, that I got frustrated and I said, that's it. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm done. You know, I'm tired of struggling and trying to live safe. I can't do it. And uh, that particular, the last night of the revival, I was on the altar and had people in my ear and uh, they were saying stuff. And I got up, I was frustrated, went back to my seat. Uh, <laughs> and uh, there, was a, there was a lady across, the, across on the other side came over to me. Uh, I don't know if you remember Sister Edith Henderson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was the one, I, I didn't really know her. And I know she didn't really know me. And she said, brother, uh, you didn't get what God wanted for you, did you? I said, no. She said, can we get on our knees? I said, yeah. And she just told me in that little soft voice she had, God loves you mm. no matter what. Nobody had ever told me that. All they ever told me was God going to get you. God going to do this to you. If you don't do this, God going to do this to you. If you do this, God going to do this to you. But they never told me that he loved me no matter what. And when I. I could feel his love. When she said that, man, I could feel his love all around me, man. Before you know it, I was on the floor. I was crying out to the Lord, and that changed my life. That actually changed my life. And so uh, experiencing God's love, see, and I, and I, I truly believe uh, when people turn their back on God or stuff like that, they haven't really experienced God's love. Right. I mean, because once you experience his love, and we all have, we all have, yes. we all have to have testimonies. Yes. But once you experience God's love, man, ain't no way, ain't no way you can't tell me nothing. I'm not turning my back on God. I am not doing it. That's not even in my vocabulary. I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. I'm not throwing in the towel. You can forget it. Mm -hmm. I'm sticking with God all the way. Yeah, I'm sticking with Jesus all the way. I, I you know, you can say whatever you want to say, but I, you know. Uh, I, what, what it's, they used to sing a song, I'll take Jesus for mine. Yeah. You can have this whole wide world, right. but I'll take Jesus for mine. So that's the way I was. I know too much about You can't make me doubt him. I know too, too much, much about, about him. him. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, that, that changed my life. Experiencing God's love. And I truly believe if you're in and out, up and down, almost level to the ground, <laughs> you, ain't experienced really, you ain't really experienced yeah. God's love. You know, the Bible says um, in, in the book of Hosea, says that he's married to the backslider. Mm -hmm. Yep. And now what that means is while you running away, he's chasing after you mm -hmm. saying, let's reconcile. Let's, let's, no, don't, uh, come on, come on back, come on back. Mm -hmm. I, I forgive you. I mm -hmm. love you. Come on. And he, he loves us like that. You know, the Bible also says that nothing can separate us from his love. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that he is love. Mm -hmm. You know, even even in my in my own life before I, I I came to the Lord, you know, I was I was born and raised in church. Mm -hmm. I was the Church of God in Christ, mm -hmm. you know, and but I would see all I see everybody else getting ministered to, getting a word and mm -hmm. everything, and I'd be sitting there saying, "Man, I don't ever get anything. God, you don't ever speak to me." So I didn't think that He cared. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> I go, I go to um, the Samaritan house because they had the Samaritan at the time, mm -hmm. and um, 
my uh, when he became my my friend, but he he passed on. Um, Apostle Eddie Walker yeah, before he's yeah, Apostle Eddie yeah, yeah. gave me a word of the Lord. He said he said God said that you you are like a tender plant, and he said he's molding and shaping you, you know, and nobody's gonna get the glory for what God is gonna do in your life. Mm. That word, it, the word was powerful, but the fact that God spoke to him to give me a message said to me that, wow, I really do matter. Mm -hmm. That meant everything to me, mm -hmm. you know, like, wow, you actually took the time mm -hmm. to, to tell me that I matter, that mm -hmm. you love me, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's all I wanted. Mm -hmm. See, you know, people, you know, oh, he love you. Yeah, I love him too. But when he makes it personal, yes, yes, that was that that was <laughs> that was when when you when you have that personal experience, it builds conviction, yeah. and you like can't nobody tell you tell me God don't love me. Right. I don't. You can do all your best. Is write what you want to write. Let's send me all types of YouTube videos you want. Right. He loves me, and no matter what I've done, no matter, see, that's what you need to understand, no matter what you've done, what you may be doing right now currently, he still loves you, mm -hmm. and he still has a plan for your life, and God has not changed his mind. Sometimes we think that when we, when we mess up and we miss the mark, mm -hmm. that God is like, you know, I can't do nothing with you, and he throws you away, but he does it. No. You know the the Bible says that he knows our he knows our he knows our beginning and our end yeah. and our middle, mm -hmm. so he already knew you was gonna do what you was gonna do, mm -hmm. you know. But because of his love, God never gave up on me. He never gave up on you, and God is never gonna give up on you. And you know, uh, we you know we said in that song, "I'm chasing after, I'm chasing after yeah. you." Yeah. Uh, no, God is chasing after us. Yes. And yes. He was pursuing me. I didn't know it, but at the time, but he pursued me, and like you said, gave us gave me that personal word. It was something for David. Yes. You know, it's what David needed to hear. I, I I was hearing a whole lot of other stuff, but I needed to hear. I needed to know, because I because I, I had already made up my mind. I'm leaving. I'm leaving the church. I'm never coming. If you don't, I, I, this is what I said. I said, Lord, if you don't do something for me tonight, I'm leaving here. I'm never coming back. That's what I said. Now you, you you say that to God. God said, "Oh, okay." <laughs> and God, He did it. And when He showed up, when that when I put that little challenge out there, like He, I didn't think He was gonna do it, but He did it. And He come over and gave me a word. It was for me, you know. It was for me. I wasn't just on the altar and everybody, you know, you everybody's going down the line and saying stuff. He had a word ex exclusively for me, yeah. and I knew it was God, because mm -hmm. that's what I needed to hear. Yes. And you yes. know, He'll give you just what you need to hear, and He knew I needed to hear that. And uh, that night, man, changed my life. Now I ain't gonna lie to you; I did struggle. I struggled a little bit after that, but right. I knew that my relationship with Him changed. Mm -hmm. My worship was different. My praise was different. Everything about serving God was different. I, I, like, I ain't going to tell you I didn't make mistakes. Yes, right, I did. Right. But I yeah. knew how to get back. I knew how to <laughs> right. I knew how to come back to God. You know, uh, like um, uh, they sang that song, uh, we fall down, but we get up. See, I knew how to fall down. I knew how to get yeah. up. Yeah. I didn't stay there. I didn't stay on that ground. I didn't stay falling. I, I, if I fell down, I got right back up, you know, and so, uh, yeah. It, once you experience God's love, there's nothing like God's love. Once you've experienced it, it it'll change your life. Yes, sir. He said, you told God, he said, God, if you don't do it, I'm out of here. I, I gave God 90 day probation. <laughs> <laughs> I said, God, I'm going to give you 90 days. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go hard on this for 90 days. If you don't make yourself real to me in 90 days, then I'm done. Within the 90 days, I had an experience with God, I was in that, I was in that, I was in, I was, I was in that house by myself. And I have said, I said, Lord, make yourself real to me. I've been hearing, I've been hearing about this and all these miracles outside of like Gideon. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Yes, I've heard about all the miracles, but where are you at? Where, you know, about all these experiences people have had with you. Make if if you're real, make yourself real, and right in that moment, at that moment, he made himself real to me. I'm telling you, it's it's. I, I was lay I was laying down on the floor, and right before me, I saw a a, a light. There was nobody in the house. Mm -hmm. I saw a light. He appeared before me just like he did Samuel. Mm -hmm. Samuel was laying down in front of the Ark of the Covenant and then he looked and he saw him after the third time he mm -hmm. called him. Mm -hmm. So I, I had and I had a, such an experience with God and then he spoke to me and I heard him. He said, I am that I am. Mm -hmm. And then he breathed on me. So I'm thinking I'm just down for a couple of minutes just basking in it, but it was three hours. Now this now let me tell you what, what was so amazing with that how God proved that it wasn't just some pizza that I ate. Mm -hmm. I at the time I used to work at um this hotel, the hotel in the city. Um and I was I was busting tables and doing room service and you know, after carrying all those plates and all that, it takes a toll on your back. I didn't wear a back brace or had mm -hmm. on the wrong shoes. Mm -hmm. So I had an issue with my back. I couldn't reach down and do nothing with my you know, get my shoes enough without feeling pain. I get up because I have to go to work that day. I go out and reach my shoes. I have no pain. Checking myself, nothing, no pain. So I'm like, wow. And then I leave and I go down to the church and um, Apostle William T. was sitting in his office. And I just came in and I sat down and I sat there and he looked at me. And when he looked at me, he knew something, something happened. Something happened to him. He said, because my face was, it was shining. It was something different. He said, uh, what's going on? I said, something happened to me. I, I, something happened. He said, he said, the Lord visit you? I said, yes. What does that mean? And I, I, I ain't been walking with the Lord. I said, well, that means if I walk with it, it means that anything that he tell me to do, I need to do. Otherwise, the blood will be required on my hand. I just knew. But I, I, I had such a conviction with that experience. Mm -hmm. and, was, and he did it because he loved me, because he knew exactly mm -hmm. what I needed. He said, this is what I got to do for him. I can, he can't just hear. I, I, come on. I need an experience. Right. And it, solidi and, it soli yeah. and it solidified that conviction. Now, did I have some mistakes, some boo-boos and all that stuff? Yes, I did. It's like everybody, you, you have growing pains. Sure. You know, but when I fell, I knew how to come back because I, 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 he said, it, you know, that I could come back. He said that he would forgive me. When I, when I missed it because I did miss it. Mm -hmm. Just like everybody else. You know, nobody's perfect. We all striving towards perfection. Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing about God's love. Nothing can separate you from his love. Right. I'll, try your best. <laughs> but he still loves you. Still loves you. He, sent, he, he sent his son. He didn't, come on, he, did, he didn't send just anybody. He sent his son. His son. To, to, to die for, he said, for God so loved the world that he gave mm -hmm. his only begotten son. And whosoever mm -hmm. will believe in him shall not perish, but will have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. And then when Jesus came, he became our sacrifice. Mm -hmm. yep. And he, he died on the cross for us, took on our sin. Mm -hmm. We was guilty. Sure guilty, guilty. He, he said, you know what? I'm going to take that on because I want them to have a relationship with the Father. I want to restore that because we love him. Mm -hmm. Come on. He loves us. Come yes. on. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for coming. Yes. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You love us so much. Yes. Listen, God loves you so much. Listen, I don't care what you're going through right now or how you feel about yourself. Listen, if you feel like don't nobody love you, he does. He does. And God's purpose and plan is for your life is absolutely amazing because he loves you. No, listen, no matter what you've done, he loves you yeah. and he will forgive you. Mm -hmm. He will forgive you. You know, they used to sing a song years ago, Andre Crouch. He proved his love to me. Yeah. And there is nothing that can come between our love. Mm -hmm. And so uh, God proved 
his love to me all this time, you know, all the time that I was growing up. I thought God was, I thought he was the guy with the big billy club, and every time you made a mistake, he was going to bounce you. And if you didn't do what he said do, he's going to, he's going to, you know, he's going to get rid of you. Right. You know, and that's the way we was kind of taught, you know, we, right. we were living under fear. Right. We wasn't, right. we wasn't, we wasn't, we wasn't uh, you know, I wasn't saved under love. It wasn't about no love. I didn't want to go to hell. hell. Right. Right. You know, I, <laughs> you know, they was, back then they was preaching, uh, they was preaching fire and brimstone, brimstone boy, yeah. you know, and uh, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't want, I didn't want that, but, but it, it was, it was out of fear. You know, you, I right. got saved out of fear because I didn't, I didn't want to burn. Right. But, but when God, when I experienced the love of God, you know, that didn't even matter to me because I knew that God loved me. Yeah, yeah. And I knew that, you know, I had that relationship with him when when I had that experience with him. And, I, man, I could just feel his love all around me, man. It was a peace. There was a joy. There was, there was all, those, all those things that you feel when, when God touches you. Uh, man, it was, it was all on me. And uh, uh, man, I, I I just I just praise God for that moment and for even uh, Sister Henderson being being uh, sensitive to the Holy Spirit and coming over, seeing me over there struggling, because yeah. I was struggling, and she seen me over there struggling, and and I know the Lord told her to come over there and and, and get me, I know He did, I know He sent her over there, and and she came over and, and uh, I remember one time I was talking to her. Uh, this is before she had passed, and I said, mm -hmm. "You, I said, you don't know this, but you saved my life." She said, "I did." I said, "You remember that day? You probably don't remember this." She said, "I remember that." I said, "God used you that night. That changed my life. You don't know that, but that changed my life." And she and she, you know, she just started crying. You know, I said, "God used you that night," and I said, "You didn't even know. I was, I was, I was getting ready to go." I was on my way to hell, mm. and you, you allow God to use you to come over, and, 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 and I knew it was God personally talking to me, and I thank God for him using you, and she, she just cried, you know, and, and uh, I, I praise God, I praise God for, uh, you know, him using people, like you said, you know, you, we talked about God using people, you know, and, mm -hmm. and allowing God to use her just to speak to me and speak into my life like that. I mean, you know, I knew it was God, but sometimes he uses people yes, he does. to, you know, and it, and it had to be somebody I didn't know, you know. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I didn't really know her. Right. But uh, but he had it had to be somebody that didn't know my situation, didn't know my circumstances, didn't know what I was going through. It had to be somebody that didn't know me. And... Mm -hmm. And God use use uh, that individual to to, to uh, just minister His love, and uh, like I say, people, if you're struggling with your walk with God, you ain't experienced His love. If you if you struggle, because I, I I that thing that's the one thing I won't struggle with, knowing that He don't love me. I know that He loves me without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. I already know that He loves me. I'll never struggle with that. Right. I'll never have a struggle. And I'll, you know, I'll always be attentive to his voice because I know what he did for me. Mm -hmm. And I, I think everybody's got that. Everybody's got that testimony. Uh, everybody's got a testimony of how they came to the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, and how God spoke to them and uh, just brought them out of, you know, brought them out of the miry. You know, they say he brought me up out the miry clay. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was, I was there and, and, and just, you know, he, 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 he knows what you need. Yes, he does. He knows what you need. And he, know, he knew that I loved him. You know, sometimes we make, we make all promises and we make vows and promises. Oh, Lord, I'm going to do this. <laughs> and, you know, the devil hears it too. And he said, oh, I know, David, you like, you like this, don't you? And they, all of a sudden he's tempting you with the yeah. thing, the very thing that you like, he's tempting you with it. And now you're being like, oh, I never thought. And then before you know it, you done, you know. Right. right. But uh, but uh, thank God for His mercy. Thank God for His grace. And you know, you know, Elder, what's also important is that as we experience God's love, 
and we walk in that love, we are also called to demonstrate that love. Sure, sure. So, so when she gave you that word, she was demonstrating the love of God, mm -hmm. you know. And well, you ask her, well, how do you demonstrate the love of God? Show somebody some kindness. Mm -hmm. Be nice, mm -hmm. you know. That's that's just that's just the basics. Mm -hmm. I mean, but you know, whatever, whatever the the same love that God showed you, the same grace. Come on, that that God gave you, give to somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, you know. Sometimes the 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 only affection somebody may get is when you say hello, mm -hmm. and then they go home to their, and they may go home alone, and there's nobody else. But that one hello may mean everything to them. They may look forward to that one hello. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you don't know what people are dealing with. Mm -hmm. Some of you that are watching, you know, you may be at may by may be by yourself and you may feel like, man, I'm just out here, I'm all alone. No, you never alone. Mm -hmm. God loves you. Yeah. God has a plan for your life. Mm -hmm. He has a plan for your life. He has something that he's called you to do. You're not just here just to be here. Mm -hmm. You're here for a reason. Yes. And he loves you. Mm -hmm. And he wants to have a relationship yes. with you. Yes. He wants you to experience his love. He wants you to experience his love. Listen, um, stretch your hands towards us. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, we pray for those that are watching that just need to experience your love. Holy Spirit, wrap your loving arms around them right now. Let your let your presence, let your love just fill yes, their God. space. Whether they're watching in the car, whether they're at home, wherever they are, yes. wherever time that they're watching it, let your love just fill that space right where they are. Let them feel you. Let them know that you love them and that you that that you have a plan for them. And you have not given up on them. You have not changed your mind about them. You love them. And you still want to do something with them. Yes. Father God, I ask that you will bless them as they walk in your love and experience your love. And Father, even those that may not have, have received you, but they are, but you are moved by what you've heard. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. Be my, be my Lord and my Savior. I receive you as that, as my Lord and my Savior. I say, Satan, you no longer are the Lord of my life. My life is submitted under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Listen, he loves you. He died for you. Yes. So that you can be reconciled back to the Father, so you can have that relationship that God had with man in the beginning. Yes. All based off of his love. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that you was blessed by, by our discussion on today about the love of God, experiencing the love of God. Yes. Amen. Um, now, what I would love for you to do, um, I would love for you to come and join us here at Kingdom Empowerment Ministries here in Port Huron. Our address is 2700 Pine Grove Avenue here in Port Huron. Our Sunday services are at 12 noon. Our Wednesday Bible study is also at 7 o'clock every Wednesdays. Now, Saturday mornings, we have upper room prayer. Mm -hmm. We have prayer at 9 o'clock every Saturday. Come and join us. Now, if you cannot join us, you can, always, you can catch us online on our Facebook. And you can get to our Facebook at Kingdom Empower at Kingdom of Power, where you can view our Sunday services at 7.30 p.m. on Sundays, our weekly broadcast on Wednesdays at 12.30, and also on Sundays, our prayer time, our morning prayer at, at 10 o'clock on Sundays, 10 a.m., amen? So you can go ahead and tune in on our, on our Facebook. Also, you can, we also have a YouTube channel at Kingdom and Power, at Kingdom and Power, and on our YouTube channel, you can look at all our, uh, our YouTube shorts, our videos, so that, you're, so that you can continue to be encouraged and strengthened in your spirit. Amen? Mm -hmm. And if you would like to find out more about Kingdom and Power Ministries, you can just go to our website, www.kingdomandpower.org. 
Listen, I love you, and I will continue to lift you up before the Lord. Be blessed, and I'll see you next time for your Kingdom Empowerment. Blessings. Thank you.